Hey everyone, welcome to another 360 in 360 covering a certain technology 360 degrees in hopefully 360 seconds. And the subject for this video is actually just Azure Virtual Networks. I've had a number of people request me to just quickly go over the fundamentals of virtual networks. So let's get to it. If I think about creating resources, um, I have subscriptions. I might have subscription one, I might have subscription two, three, four, five, etc. And then we have the Azure regions where I can deploy to. So let's say, for example, maybe I've got West US and East US. And obviously there's, there's lots of other ones. So I can kind of think about this, this grid. And the reason I'm drawing this is a virtual network is created within a certain subscription and a certain region. A virtual network cannot span regions. A virtual network cannot span subscriptions. So my virtual network would live within a certain subscription within a certain region. I can have multiple VNets within a certain sub within a certain region. That, that's totally okay. Now my virtual network itself is defined as one or more IP ranges. We use the CIDR format. This is kind of the network slash number of uh, bits that make up the, the subnet. So I can think about, I can add various IP ranges I can have more than one, and these can be both IPv4 and they can be IPv6. So both are supported. When I add the, the ranges for my virtual network definition, I can add them IPv4 and I can add them IPv6. So I can have multiple of those. I can even add them post-creation if I need additional address spaces added to my virtual network. And then once I have that virtual network within a region within a subscription, um, I can then go and divide it into subnets the same way we would on premises. So I could divide this up into kind of subnet one, subnet two, etc. And once again, a subnet is defined using that kind of CIDR format, uh, network name slash number of bits that make up the network. And once again, they can have both an IPv4 and an IPv6. If I use IPv6, it's always going to be slash 64 just for compatibility with potential on-premises routers, etc. So I define my subnets using an IP range. Now there is no concept of this IP range gets public IPs, this does not. Um, any resource I create in the subnet is a private IP. That's an IP address allocated from that subnet's address pool. Um, I can optionally add public IPs if I want to. Uh, I can do an instance level, assign it to the VM, or I can set like a load balancer, which is the more common approach we would do there. When I create a subnet, the smallest one I'd ever create is a slash 29. And that would normally give me eight usable IPs, but I always lose the first IP because that is the network address. Then Azure takes the next one for its own gateway purposes. Then it takes the next two for its own DNS purposes. And then the last IP address is always just used for um, the kind of broadcast address. So that means if I had a slash 29, I'd have three usable IP addresses. So any subnet I create, I always lose five IPs, part of the protocol and just what Azure needs itself. So we always kind of subtract five from whatever IP addresses we have. Different subnets can all talk to each other. Um, this is software-defined networking. Azure provides that gateway functionality. I can't ping the gateway. This is SDN, it's not a physical device, but they can all communicate by default. Now I mentioned there's no concept of kind of public-facing subnet or private. If you want, you can stop subnets being able to have public IP addresses. I would, for example, use something like Azure Policy. So I could use Azure Policy and apply it and then I could say, look, no one can have a public IP except this subnet. So that's where I would kind of go ahead and use Azure policy. I would nominate, for example, hey, this subnet here, maybe call it DMZ, that's allowed to have public IPs, but none of the others are allowed to have them. Now, when I think about IP addresses, 
When I create a resource, for example, a virtual machine, that's an obvious one, it has a virtual NIC, and that NIC will get an IP address given to it from the available IP addresses of the subnet. I don't statically assign the IP within the VM, unless it's a kind of edge case where I have multiple IPs per network interface, but it's always gonna be essentially DHCP. At the Azure Fabric level, I can say, hey, this VM always should get this particular IP, so that's a static private IP. The VM is still using DHCP, but the Fabric will always give it the same one. That's useful for a domain controller, a SQL database. I can create VMs with NICs in multiple subnets. This is more for network virtual appliances, but certainly it can be done. Now I'm drawing virtual machines. Many things interact with virtual networks. Yes, virtual machines. Yes, virtual machine scale sets. That's really just automatic deployments of VMs from some kind of golden image. But I can also have things like SQL managed instance that deploys into a virtual network. I can think about an app service environment, a dedicated app service um, goes into my VNet. Things like the AKS, the nodes, the worker nodes are deployed into either my virtual network from using Azure CNI, or if it's KubeNet will create its own virtual network. But all of the other stuff out there, the PaaS services, nearly all of them can interact with a VNet via private link. Private link, will inject an IP address into my VNet that represents that service. So again, AKS, the API server that I use for management operations, I could access via private link. So many things can interact with it. But the point is, I create a virtual network made up of um, IP ranges, I divide it into subnets, and I place resources inside it. That lives within a certain region within a certain subscription. If I want to control the flow of traffic, I can use network security groups, um, I could use Azure Firewall, I could use network virtual appliances, there's a number of options to control that flow. Anything in a VNet can access the internet by default and get a stateful response. Um, NAT services are provided for me automatically. If I want to connect outside, to connect to other virtual networks, I can use peering, I'll do a different video on that. If I want to connect to on-premises, I could use a site site VPN. If I just want a single machine to connect, I could use point to site VPN. Um, in enterprise, commonly we're gonna use Express Route. That's kind of a dedicated private connection that I connect via a gateway to my VNet and connect to my on-premises environment. So that's really a high level overview of virtual networks. Again, bound by region, bound by subscription, break it into subnets, resources are deployed into that subnet. They all get a private IP from the available scope. I hope that was useful. I hope I was nearly within my six minutes this time. Um, please like, subscribe, comment, share. Until next time, take care.